Hello, I'm Tony Ruprecht, the former Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism. 30 years ago, an important event took place in the history of mankind. The independence and declaration of Kazakhstan as a totally free and independent nation. That was an important event. And so today, we are going to celebrate that event because of its great importance to mankind. Kazakhstan is an important country to us. And we know that Kazakhstan is also peopled by many nations, by many cultures, and by different people who come from other countries as well, just like Canada. And that is why we're very excited to have better relations with Kazakhstan in terms of trade, in terms of culture, in terms of the professions, in terms of investments, of all kinds of ideas are coming up so that Canada and that Kazakhstan can have a better and closer relationship. Most people do know that Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country in the world. It is the most dominant nation of Central Asia with the strongest performing economy. It is a democratic, secular constitutional republic with a diverse cultural heritage. Again, just like Canada. And that is why it is so important that our two nations come together, that our two nations can provide a history lesson to the rest of the world. And so my friends, I'm delighted to speak to you today on behalf of Canada, and hopefully on behalf of all the different multicultural communities. And we say, let us work together to become stronger nations within the United Nations. And now we're going to show Canadians, and we want Canadians to know all about Kazakhstan, not only how ahead it is of many other countries, not only in the region, but countries in the world, but of interest to many areas, of the beauty of the mountains, of nature, of the future city, and of different items that are really of interest, such as industries in space technology, robotics, and digital technology, energy and high-tech enterprises, and a shift to a green economy. Imagine, all of this could be had if you, and I for that matter, are going to visit this wonderful and beautiful country you're about to see. So I hope you enjoy this great video. Dear friends, my name is Elena Olga and I have never been to Kazakhstan, but having attended Nauruz in Toronto, which is the day of spring, nature renewal and beginning of a new life, I knew a lot about Kazakhstan and I'm ready to share it with you. Nauruz is the main holiday celebrated for more than 5000 years as New Year which aligns with the real astronomic event, Vernal Equinox. The first words I heard were welcome to Kazakhstan. If you want to get to know interesting traditions, beautiful nature, unique combination of the Asian and modern, you don't need to travel the whole world, just come to Kazakhstan. All the guests and visitors are always welcome, so you will feel a true hospitality of the country located at the very heart of Eurasia. I came from Kazakhstan half a year ago. I miss my motherland a lot. Nowruz is the day when the Kazakhs, the Kyrgyz, the Uzbeks, the Tajiks and other Turkic people join together. And we sincerely help each other and respect each other. This is what we have to continue doing. The Republic of Kazakhstan, located at the very heart of Eurasia, appeared on the geopolitical map only in 1991. Kazakh, the word of Turkic origin, means a free person, and Kazakhstan is the country which was historically inhabited by freedom-loving nomads. 
Kazakhstan has become a motherland for people of different nationalities and religions, united by the common historical heritage. The citizens of Kazakhstan are proud of their multicultural country. Throughout the centuries, from generation to generation, Kazakhstan keeps and maintains a good tradition of friendship between nations. Today we have guests from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Russia. We actually invited all the nations. Each nation tries to bring their traditions, customs and rituals. Because these things like a mirror reflect the features of national character and culture. There is a desire to give this knowledge and skills to their children, who in their turn will share and develop them further. I came from Kyrgyzstan. I was brought up in a small village far away in the mountains. I haven't been back to my motherland for 14 years, and I'm glad to be here and look back to my childhood. I'm taking part in this celebration with tears in my eyes. I came with my family from Uzbekistan, from sunny Tashkent. Nowriz is the vernal equinox festival, when Mother Nature wakes, the sun shines, the grass becomes green. This is a wonderful festival, we love it so much and all the Asian countries celebrate it together. Nowadays, there are about 130 nationalities living in Kazakhstan. More than half of them are Kazakhs, one-fourth are Russians, the rest are Ukrainians, Uzbeks, Uyghurs, Korean, German and Tatars. The main religions are Islam and Christianity. The national language is Kazakh. Russian has the status of the language for international communication and used on equal terms with the national language in government agencies, institutions and other organizations. As for the rising generation, they speak three languages, including English. The Kazakh language is an ancestor language, Russian is for communication and English is becoming popular as a language for business and for communication with foreign guests and visitors. In spite of the fact that the Republic of Kazakhstan takes the ninth place in the world according to its area, it is still unknown and mysterious for lots of people. Even the keenest traveler will discover a lot of interesting and wonderful things in Kazakhstan. Mountain peaks covered with snow, vast highlands, deep rivers, dry deserts, endless flower fields and virgin forest reserves. The beautiful nature of Kazakhstan is hard to describe by words, and it is impossible to tell about all the picturesque parts of the country in my short report. In the south, southeast and west, the pure white peaks of the Tanshan and Altai mountain chains sparkle around. In the west, the country is bordered by the Caspian Sea, the biggest sea lake in the world. There is also Lake Balhash in the Sariyarka prairies, one part of which has salt water and the other part fresh water. The northern Kazakhstan also has a huge variety of beautiful places. Here you can find hundreds of glacial lakes surrounded by Kokshitao pine woods. You will never forget cave paintings and sculptures in the Bayanaul National Park. Korgaljin Nature Reserve has more than 300 kinds of plants and the most northern flamingo colony in the world. Great importance is given to maintaining nature reserves and national parks and their unique landscapes, as well as protecting animal and vegetal life. From the ecological point of view, Kazakhstan is the country with virgin, diverse and beautiful nature. Those who love rest and relaxation, as well as impressive landscapes, will definitely appreciate famous resorts with therapeutic mods and mineral springs of Kokshitao Nature Park. I am looking forward to visiting Kazakhstan and seeing everything with my own eyes. Uh, we're here with the President of the United Communities of Canada, Inga, and Inga has a few points to make. 
Hi, Tony. Hi, everybody. The flags are here around us, represent all the people we have in Canada and where they came from. Dr. Ruprecht, you wrote a very important book for us about ethnic communities. Could you please explain us about it? I can see your book here. This is, uh, this is uh, Toronto in many faces. This is the book that uh, we have produced. And uh, as you can see, it's called Toronto's Many Faces. Now, the wonderful part about this is following. You did not know, my Canadian friends, that Kazakhstan is already in the book. Why is it in the book? In other words, we already know that people who have come from Kazakhstan come to Canada and made a continuous great contribution to our country. And that is the reason why we ensure that people who make a contribution for us here end up in this book. So anyone who wants to know about Kazakhstan in Canada already knows, already can be informed about this wonderful country. In fact, Inga, you and I can actually go to Kazakhstan and see the beautiful mountains and see the future city they've created and see the many wonderful things that they have accomplished. And that is why Kazakhstan is really so dominant in the area. It is the most dominant country in Central Asia, not only with the economy, but with people, their education, their cultural accomplishments, and many other things. And so my friends, if you need to know more about Kazakhstan and its people in Canada, you can get this book, including our phone numbers of the consulate, of the Kazakhstan embassy, and many other items. So I'm delighted to have printed this book, and I'm also happy to give you a copy of it, Thank Madam you. President. Uh, Dr. Ruprecht, you told me there is a good chance to raise the flag of Kazakhstan in front of a parliament. When will it happen? Well, Inga, it's going to happen exactly on the 16th of December this year. And we would like uh, everyone to know in Canada, imagine this. This flag of Kazakhstan will fly at the parliament. And everyone who walks by will say, well, this is the flag. And why is the flag flying in the parliament? And the reason is simple, because of the independence, but also there's a second reason, which is just as important. And that is, we have people who came from Kazakhstan to Canada. They're here, they've developed their own businesses, and they've made a contribution to our country. And I believe that that should be recognized. It should be recognized that they are making a contribution now for our country. What better way would it be than to raise this great flag of Kazakhstan in the parliament, also in front of the building, where people walk by and drive by and they will see the flag. They will ask us questions. Why today? They'll ask us questions. Why the flag? And we have a good answer. We say, visit Kazakhstan. Why? It's a safe country. It's got a great foreign policy as an example. It is there to protect its citizens, to protect the environment. It's right part. It's part of their, not the constitution, but it's part of what the foreign policy intends to do. It is for safety. It is for security. All these things are important to us. And that's why we raise this flag, to ensure that people know about it and that there is a greater communication and a greater appreciation between Canada and Kazakhstan. So together, we can build a better world. Together, we can go into the future confident that we know our values are being respected and that we are together in this great nation of building a relationship between our two countries.